Hi everyone, it's a Simmer here. Welcome to my channel. So in case you've missed a live stream about a new werewolves pack coming, I'm gonna try to quickly summarize some of the highlights. But it's gonna be a bit difficult to summarize because there was a lot. So the live stream was done by Simguru Morgan and Grim Surudoi. They started off with showing some of the clothes in cars. The clothes were mainly inspired by some grungy punk kind of theme and I really liked them a lot. It's a completely different style from what we have so far in the game, so I think that's really interesting. And there were also, like, amazingly cute toddler outfits, too. And, yeah, they were really cute. Then they showed off the aspiration. At first, there's, like, one aspiration for werewolf, like, sort of, like, tutorial-based, like, on how to become a, a werewolf. But once you've completed this, there are four others that open up so in total it's five aspirations then they showed off the world the new world moonwood mill now we've already seen that a little bit in the trailer uh so it's like an old lumberjack village that was deserted and now has been taken over by the werewolves there are only five lots four or five i think five lots so that's not a lot but they said that there's a lot to explore in the world and it has an open world feel now for as far as i can judge that from the live stream they did seem to deliver on that of course with werewolves they're gonna add a lunar cycle to the game that's gonna be a base game update so everybody can enjoy <laughs> lunar cycles they will be customizable which i think is logical because we can also customize our seasons like in my game i have the seasons on the longest possible setting you can also choose to have no lunar cycle at all because they will affect other occults as well. They didn't specify how, <laughs> but if we have other packs, we are gonna find out how the lunar cycle will affect our other occults. So they showed the underground tunnels. In the world there are three points from which you can access the underground tunnels. So it's sort of text adventure based. But you can learn a lot about the lore. So this world everywhere has hidden lore that you can uh, find out if, if you're interested in that. But if you're not into this lore kind of thing... You can also leave it more at the background. But the underground tunnels is one of the ways to find out about that lore. So we can learn how the werewolves are linked to the world and how they are linked to the other occults. And everybody can explore the underground worlds, but occult sims will have an easier time. And there are certain things that are really specific to werewolves. There's a lake with swimmable water, there's also new fish, and there are lots of collectibles in the world. And then they also talked about Greg, who is Greg, and we were fortunate enough to see Greg show up in the live stream. But I also felt a bit sad because it was a bit of a spoiler, so I don't know how I feel feel about that so if you don't want any spoilers you might skip ahead a little bit so at first i thought it was some well, when greg showed up it seemed like some kind of ghost werewolf to me but that was just like an optical illusion or some of some kind it's just this like tough werewolf it's like always a bit grumpy he will pick a fight with other strong werewolves and vampires but normal sims or weak werewolves 
He's just like, who are you? <laughs> Whatever. We can socialize with him, but it's difficult to build up. He is woohooable. <laughs> But because it's difficult to socialize with them, it's gonna be it's not gonna be easy to build any kind of relationship with him. The library in the world was built by James Turner. We all know, of course. And so the idea of the world is a bit that yeah, it was an abandoned and the werewolves repurposed a lot of stuff. And the library, the builds, reflects that. But in the library, we can find new books. And in those books, we can also find out more about uh, the lore, the hidden lore. There are two packs, werewolf packs, in the world. You can befriend them, one of them or both. And then you can try to join them and there are trials for doing so. The werewolves can also spar, very similar to the vampires. But then they also said, they didn't show it, but they also said we could have like a supernatural spar between werewolves and vampires. So that kind of piqued my interest. In any case, it, this uh, cross-pack compatibility is definitely a good thing. There are various ways to become a werewolf. First of all, you can make one in cast. But through gameplay, if your friends with a werewolf, you can ask them to bite you. A different way is if you catch werebees, you can catch them by accident or as a consequence from one of the adventures in the underground tunnels. If you don't want your sims to become werewolves, there is a remedy that we can get from the bus bar that we also saw in the trailer. This bar bus, they also said it's available from Build and Buy. So for builders, that could be interesting. It's something different anyway, because you don't, we don't necessarily have to put a bar in there. We can put whatever we want in there. Then under this bar, there is this hideout. The door that leads up to there is uh, limited to werewolves and is available from Build By as well. And then there's also a different kind of door that leads directly to the underground tunnels that we can place in our builds. We can also place that door it's on a lot in a different world but then it links back to the underground tunnels i guess that's similar to the portal of uh, realm of magic another cool thing is this world if you have different packs this world actually attracts occults so you could have like this occult supernatural party hangout gathering whatever all the pre-mates in the world have a backstory and that backstory you can find out through interacting with them and it also links back to the hidden lore the werewolves have will have a fury meter the ui looked similar to the spellcasters one but instead of building up spellcaster charge there's fury but if i understand correctly it seems like uh every werewolf will be triggered by different things that builds up their fury and if their fury is full, they go on crazy rampage. <laughs> and then they can destroy and break everything. They start picking fights. Really, it was quite a sight. And linked to their traits, their personality, they also have temperaments. They showed a skill tree, which was very similar to the one of vampires. Really, a, a lot of things to obtain. It didn't seem like it would be that we played them um, a couple of times and that the skill tree is filled. No, it's, it was a lot. It seemed like a lot. And on the left-hand side of the skill tree, there were abilities that we could unlock, but that need to be unlocked in-game through gameplay. So that builds into a story. 
Oh, I forgot to mention the packs. If you join a pack, they will have tasks. Things you can do to like get promoted into the pack. It seemed similar but deeper than the organizations in university. And if you think your werewolf is ready, you can also have them challenge the alpha and then they can become leader of the pack. Now, when your sim transforms for the first time into a werewolf, the werewolf form they will have will be sort of linked to their nose, in fact. <laughs> so they showed if you give your sim like a really crazy nose, your werewolf will have a really crazy nose. From that point, we can customize our werewolf form and uh, the way we want there are lots of options for ears for noses for chins they also added a bunch of scars and also body scars that's new so we can make our walls because there was some critique from we can't always like everything i know and different people like different things there was a bit of critique on the style of the werewolves because they look too too cute and i agree that the werewolves in the trailer looked cute i don't mind but i think we will have lots of options to, to make them look less cute if you don't like them to be that cute so there were body scars there were tattoos. There's also, <laughs> which we've already kind of expected, but anyway, there was also a paint mode similar to the ones we have in pets. So yeah, it's really very customizable. And then I showed build and buy. Now as for the number of items, it seemed less than what we than what we usually get in a pack but i personally i don't mind because there was a lot of cars and there seems to be a lot of gameplay too and the items that were there did look it, it was a kind of a rundown grungy style and uh, well if that's the kind of items you need for a specific build there's not a lot that sort of thing in the game. In Batu maybe, but we all know Batu <laughs> isn't the most popular pack for some reason. <laughs> so, and there was also a small telescope. There was this amazingly cute toddler bed. And the items did have this like specific style. Yeah, it's good to have options. So it's good to have. It's nice that we have a lot of nice looking stuff in the game because we all agree sims 4 looks stunning but sometimes if for a story if you want to make a build that looks a bit more rundown or gr grungy you don't have a lot of options and the build buy in this pack will expand on those options and i guess that's it there was a lot more but it was so much <laughs> I couldn't take note of everything, so it's just the highlights. I'm sure I covered the most important points. I might have forgotten a few things, but that was really a lot. And I think the live stream went on for about an hour. There was really a lot to show. So I'm gonna end the video here. I hope you liked it. Please leave a comment, share, like and subscribe. Now see you in another video. Bye.